Uh, to Susan Crabtree, uh, who's been following very closely at Real Clear Politics White House and national uh, political correspondent. Uh, Susan, uh, it, it, it's very obvious the president's poll numbers have tumbled. That's a snapshot in time. Things can change. We know historically uh, other presidents have been in tough positions and come out of them, just as presidents who are high in the polls have, have, have seen that to be a fleeting moment as well. But that being said, this comes at the worst time for President who, you know, many want, at least in his party, to be leading this charge to get these spending packages through. And those abroad who want him leading the charge on climate change and even that global corporate tax. So he's wounded right now. That's for sure. I've never seen a president's sort of approval rating dip uh, actually plummet this far, this fast. Uh, I really can't remember a time when that has happened. Uh, we have, you know, the new Suffolk University poll saying he is at 41 percent. Real clear politics, we like to track this very closely. He was always, since January, in the mid to low 50s. He's underwater on everything, um, the economy, immigration. The only thing where he's sort of equal is on COVID. Um, and even that has been dipping down um, at, to about 50-50 right now with the new Delta variant. So. Yeah, it's really hard. I'm working on a piece about whether he can rebuild this credibility. Uh, going into the fall, the Democrats really wanted this uh, domestic agenda to be the focus. And it seems avoidable that he would make September 11th uh, of all times uh, such a, a, an important date to so many Americans, um, the focus on his foreign policy and this incredible debacle that we're seeing in Afghanistan. You know, I, I've always wondered what the strategy is, Susan, where he so rarely talks about it, takes questions about it. Sometimes he's forced into it and then moves on. Today's a very good example. He's having this cybersecurity summit with top, you know, CEOs uh, and, and keeping the eye on, um, you know, the, the, the COVID cases that he says are stabilizing right now as this vaccine gets FDA approval and maybe another one to come. And the strategy must be people will get over their obsession and fixation with what's going on in Afghanistan when we're out of Afghanistan and we can look back at, you know, the couple of hundred thousand. That's at least their estimate of the White House. They will have evacuated from Afghanistan. Do you buy that? Well, I think it's a huge gamble because we saw what happened in Iraq. You know, I was there when they announced in at Fort Bragg that they were taking every single troop out and it was a big celebration only three years later to send way more troops back in and get us back into the war on terrorism. Uh, when you take the, your eye off the ball, it's very easy for terrorists to reconstitute. We have General Milley saying they already are. We know that there's an ISIS-K threat that Biden talked about. What's going to happen there? I don't. I see this as a very unnecessary gamble. And he looks very detached to me talking about cybersecurity right now. Uh, when you have the main focus, so many Americans are either have had loved ones in Afghanistan or Iraq, or they know are uh, very close to Americans who families who have had their their siblings and loved ones deployed. So I think this is a you know it's a very avoidable situation that and predictable situation, and I I really don't understand how he would have not handled this better to be able to get our people out and not leave them stranded in Afghanistan, thousands of Americans and SIVs. It's just, to me, a really tragic situation um, and that, you know, it's going to look back. This is not something that is fleeting. Uh, we are going to be focused on Afghanistan and whether there's a terrorist threat emanating from there for months to come. And you have Democrats in his party being extremely critical of him. And I think that's the key here. You had a Democrat uh, congressman going to Afghanistan in the last 24 hours. Um, that's how concerned they are about how what he is telling people is not matching what's going on the ground. And so there's a great credibility gap. Yeah, I think to your point, um, and just to, to put a, a final top on it here, it, it, it isn't so much that Americans uh, didn't agree with him about it after 20 years, it's time to get out. What galls them right now is, is, is they're handing it over to the country uh, or, or to the group that, that, that got us in Afghanistan to begin with. And it, it's like the, the, the loser has the spoils. Uh, and, and, and we're okay with that. I, I, there's an inability of the White House to recognize that that... But that is, is tragic in and of itself. 
Absolutely so. And, you know, the fact that they are wearing our uniforms, they have our equipment, this is just, you know, unbelievable to so many Americans. And uh, I honestly think that the, it would have been, if he had done it in the right way and there was minor issues, it would have been something that we could, you know, Americans were ready to turn the page. You see that in the polls. About 60 percent of Americans still support the withdrawal, even to this day. But right, they right. do not like how it has gone, um, come to pass. This is, you know, it's obvious that America is ready to turn the page on Afghanistan, but not in this way, not in a way that was so humiliating and so hard for so many Americans that have had people serve or know of people and loved ones that have served there. All right, Susan, very good catching up with you. Real Clear Politics White House National Political Correspondent, uh, Susan Crabtree, on all of that.